And one of the things that you now remember is the discussion that you had with, the, with President Trump on July 26th in that restaurant in Kiev, right? Yeah, what triggered my memory was someone's reference to ASAP Rocky, which was, I believe, the primary purpose of the phone call. Certainly. So you, that's one way memory works, isn't it? And you were sitting in a restaurant uh, with David Holmes in Kiev, right, having lunch? Uh, I think I took the whole team out to lunch after the uh, meeting, yeah. And it was a meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting you had with Andre Yermak? Uh, again, trying to reconstruct a very busy day without the benefit, but if someone said I had a meeting uh, and I went to the meeting, then I'm not going to dispute that. And particularly if that person took notes at that meeting? Correct. Or sat outside the door when you didn't let them in? I have no control over who goes into a meeting in Ukraine. That was the Ukrainians that didn't let him in. And you had also met with President Zelensky, among others, that day. Is that That's right? Correct. That's correct. And you called President Trump from your cell phone from the restaurant. Is that right? That's right. And this was not a secure line, was it? No, it was an open line. Did you worry that a foreign government may be listening to your phone call with the President of the United States? Well, I have uh, unclassified conversations all the time from landlines that are unsecured and cell phones. Uh, if the topic is not classified and it's up to the president to decide what's classified and what's not classified, and we were having, he, he was aware that it was an open line as well. And you don't recall the specifics of holding your phone outside, far away from your ear as Mr. Holmes testified, but you have no reason to question his recollection of that, do you? I mean, it seems a little strange I would hold my phone here. I probably had my phone close to my ear, and he claims to have overheard part of the conversation, and I'm not going to dispute what he did or didn't hear. Well, he also testified that you confirmed to President Trump that you were in Ukraine at the time, and that President Zelensky, quote, loves your ass, unquote. Do you recall saying that? Yeah, it sounds like something I would say. <laughs> That's how President Trump and I communicate, a lot of four-letter words. In this case, three-letter. <laughs> Holmes then said that he heard President Trump ask, quote, is he, meaning Zelensky, going to do the investigation? To which you replied, he's going to do it. And then you added that President Zelensky will do anything that you, meaning President Trump, ask him to. Do you recall that? I probably said something to that effect because I remember the meeting, uh, the President, or President Zelensky was very, um, uh, solicitous is not a good word, he was just very willing to work with the United States and was being very amicable. And so putting it in Trump speak, uh, by saying he loves your ass, he'll do whatever you want, meant that he would really work with us on a whole host of issues. He was not only willing, he was very eager, right? That's fair. Because Ukraine depends on the United States as its most significant ally, isn't that correct? One of its most, absolutely. So, just so we understand, you you were in Kiev the day after President Trump spoke to President Zelensky on the phone. And you now know from reading the call record that in that phone call, he requested a favor for President Zelensky to do investigations related to the Bidens and the 2016 election, right? I do now know that, yes. And you met with President Zelensky and his aides on the day after that phone call. And then you had a conversation with President Trump from your cell phone, from a restaurant terrace, and he asked you whether President Zelensky will do the investigations. And you responded that he's going to do them, or it, and that President Zelensky will do anything you ask him to do. Is that an accurate recitation of what happened there? I, I, it could have been words to that effect. I don't remember my exact response. But you don't have any reason to dispute Mr. Holmes' recollection, correct? I won't dispute it, but again, I don't recall. After you hung up with the president, Mr. Holmes testified about a conversation that you and he had where he says that you told Mr. Holmes 
that the president does not care about Ukraine, but the president used the more colorful language, including a four-letter word that you just referenced to, you just referenced. Do you recall saying that to Mr. Holmes? Again, I don't recall my exact words, but clearly the president, beginning on May 23rd, when we met with him in the Oval Office, was not a big fan. But he was a big fan of the investigations. Apparently so. And in fact, Mr. Holmes said that you, that you said that President Trump only cares about the, quote, big stuff that benefits himself. Is that something that you would have said at the time? I don't think I would have said that. I would have, I would have honestly said that he was not a big fan of Ukraine and he wants the investigations that we had been talking about for quite some time to move forward. That's what I would have said, because that's the fact. Mr. Holmes also remembers that you told him in giving an example of the big stuff, the Biden investigation that Rudy Giuliani was pushing. Do you recall that? I don't. I recall Burisma, not Biden. And, but do you recall saying, an, at least refer, referring to an investigation that Rudy Giuliani was pushing? Is that something that you likely would have said? I would have, yes. 